Hey guys, welcome back to another Disney ranking video here on the channel. Now, if you were here last time, we looked at the Disney wartime era, and that was an extremely intriguing era for Disney animation. Though it's not one of my favorite eras in Disney, it was still a lot of fun to look at these old films that many people don't even really talk about, and some people just don't really talk about this era or have really even seen all the films during that time but it was a lot of fun and now we are going to be moving on into a more familiar era for a lot of Disney fans the Silver Age, which consisted of eight films and took place between 1950 and 1967. The Silver Age brought Disney back in a big way, almost making it definitely a second golden age. It was the second coming of Disney, basically. After World War II and these package films, Disney was focused on making another feature-length film that was based on a fairy tale, and we got the movie Cinderella, and after that, it's all history, and this was a great time for animation. Although the box office returns for all these films weren't spectacular or anything, it was still a great moment for the company, and many of these films have gone on to become Disney classics, and considered just some of the best that this company has to offer. And we're going to be looking at those films today and ranking them best to worst, starting with number eight. And at number eight, we have The Sword in the Stone, which is definitely my least favorite of this era, which is why it's number eight. But it is also an extremely disappointing film. This being the first time I've ever seen this film, I was left really wanting a lot more. The animation is not that bad or anything, but it is definitely not as good as some of the other animation that is on this list. It is definitely weaker. There feels like... There's this feeling that it's a little unfinished, and I just hated that about it. But also, I thought it was very expressive in its animation, and the characters were also a lot of fun. I love Merlin, I love Arthur, I love Madame Mim, and there's a lot of expression in the animation, but it's just nothing stellar. And that's what this film is. It's nothing stellar. It's fun. It's disposable, though, with just, it feels like it meanders around a bit too much, and there's just not enough there. The songs are really good, and the third act with the wizard's duel and Arthur pulling the sword out are just absolutely magical, and just, it gives that Disney magic. However, I am taking nothing away from this film, like, it didn't leave an impact on me, and I just felt overall disappointed. However, I can say I had fun while it lasted, but I'm not going to be returning to this movie like other movies on this list. At number seven, we have 101 Dalmatians, which is a film I used to love as a kid. I used to watch this film all the time, and watching it now as an adult, it is still a really fun movie. It's a cute movie, a really cute movie. However, I can deny that I was kind of bored watching this movie, especially during the middle of the film. However, I can say that it is a step up from The Sword in the Stone, and it is still a really fun movie with a great song, Cruella de Vil, and also that villain. Cruella de Vil is one of the best Disney villains. I love how she is drawn. I love her character. Her actress is absolutely amazing, and I love how vile and evil she is. And watching her in the third act of this movie, which is so much fun, this car chase that just goes through the countryside, is just so much fun to watch. And it's just really fun, guys, although it just doesn't leave much of an impact on me except for those couple of moments here and there. It is a very cute movie, and I think that's really all it's got going for it, is cuteness. The animation, although is a little cheaper, it is still, I think, a little better than what we got in The Sword in the Stone, but it is overall a much better film. It's a fun film, and I understand why many people consider this an absolute classic, 
but it's not one that I absolutely love. And at number six, we have Alice in Wonderland, which is an incredibly fun and inventive film. Now, I said in my previous ranking that The Three Caballeros was if Disney did a movie on acid. And that is definitely what this film is, too. And it is a blast of a film with just great, colorful animation, a darker tone, and just so much creative fun in it with so many memorable characters such as the March Hare, we got um, the Mad Hatter, we have the Queen of Hearts, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, the Cheshire Cat. It's so much fun. It's balls out insane. And I love that it doesn't have this really continuous narrative that goes through the entire film. It feels like episodes and it feels disjointed, but it works because you are in this world that really doesn't make a lot of sense. And I absolutely loved that about this film and thought it was just a lot of fun. It was a breath of fresh air from more traditional things that we were getting in the golden age and to an extent even the wartime era but this was just a lot of fun it is definitely a blast to watch i could watch this anytime next at number five we have the jungle book which was my first time ever watching this film and i really loved it but i almost didn't as i was watching this film it just was kind of good but nothing spectacular or anything. I really did like the animation for the most part, even though it's still not that type of animation that Disney really was great at. It's definitely the style that they adopted in, well, the late 60s and into the 70s. That's not my favorite, but it was still expressive and a lot of fun with memorable songs that you can just hum and sing any day of the week, and with great characters, Mowgli, Baloo, and all of them, a great villain that isn't in the movie enough, and even though this is episodic, um, it is one of my complaints with the film, and I know I said in Alice in Wonderland that I liked how it was episodic, but it just worked for that movie and that world. However, this is a more realistic world, and just there's really not any connective tissue with these events. They just kind of happen. Mowgli goes here, goes here, goes here, but it does have a great third act with Shere Khan and Mowgli entering the village of man at the very end. It is heartfelt, it is wonderful to watch, and is really a good Disney film. And at number four, we have Peter Pan. Definitely a Disney movie more garnered towards boys. It is a fun, swashbuckling adventure with heart and just a lot of fun and just great action even and great comedy as well. I love Captain Hook and Shmee in this film. I love their interactions with each other and the crocodile. I love Tinkerbell and I love Peter Pan and his relationship with Wendy. I love the songs in this movie and the ending of this movie always gets me with the family looking out their window at the ship crossing by. It is such a memorable movie with great animation, just fun characters and fun songs that is just a great swashbuckling adventure that is different from what we got in previous films with other Disney movies. It's a ton of fun. Now, at number three, we have Cinderella, which is a film that I absolutely love. Guys, Cinderella is what I wish Snow White was. I don't love Snow White, but I absolutely adore this film, and I think it does Snow White so much better. The character of Cinderella is so much more larger than life. I feel for this person. I love her. I care about her and I want to see her succeed. I think she's got some dimensions to her that Snow White does not. And also, 
I love the mice in this film. They are great comic relief, and I think they work a lot better than the dwarves in Snow White. I think they are just a lot of fun, and they are definitely supposed to be sort of the dwarves of this movie. I also love the interactions with the king. That is also a lot of fun, and the great great villain, Lady Tremaine. The songs are also beautiful, and the animation is absolutely fantastic to watch, guys. This is a great Disney Princess film. It's one of my favorites of all time, and just, it's a fun movie to watch for people to just sit down and enjoy a classic Disney film. At number two, we have The Lady and the Tramp. Guys, I love this film so much. This was a film that I watched a couple of years ago, and I really wasn't looking forward to it because I was like, I'm not going to care about this film, and I absolutely loved it. The widescreen in this movie just gives it so much life and so much breathing room. The animation is stellar. It is beautiful. The animation. I love it so much, and I love these characters as well. Lady and the Tramp, they are absolutely great. I love their adventure. I love their romance. Great music throughout, and again, it is basically cutesy dog fun stuff, like with 101 Dalmatians, but I think this film just strikes a chord with me that that film does not, where I'm very emotionally distant with that film. I love this film, and it just fills me with so much joy watching it. I love the finale of the film. I think it is really fun. I love all the songs, the extremely memorable spaghetti scene. You can't think about this movie and not think about that scene. I just, I love this movie, guys. It is one of my favorite Disney films by far. And finally, at number one, we have Sleeping Beauty. Now, this is a film that many people might be surprised is my number one. I don't know very many people that put this as their number one for the Silver Age, but I absolutely adore this film to no end. And many people might be wondering exactly why. I mean, Sleeping Beauty, Princess Aurora, is only in like 18 minutes of this entire movie. She only has about 18 lines. She's a terrible character. And I'm like, well, she's not that bad. She's not very memorable or anything. But really, this movie's not really about her. It's about the three good fairies and them trying to take care of her. And I think that is where it is so engaging. I love the side characters in this film and the three good fairies. I think they are so fun and so interesting with just great comedic timing. There is great animation in this film. Oh my gosh, the animation in this film is one of the best things I could say about this film. The animation is, without a doubt, the best animation I've seen in a Disney film so far that I have watched. I love this animation. And it is a completely different style from what we saw before with a much more angular style that is very much focused on medieval art. And I absolutely love it. The colors just pop. I love the characters, of course, as I said. And I also love the relationship and friendship between the king or the kings, I should say, and the comedy in this film is so good. I laughed so much during this film, especially the scene where the bard keeps on getting drunk. It is laugh out loud hilarious for me. I also think the third act of this film is one of the best third acts in a Disney film. It is so much fun watching the prince fight the dragon at the end, and oh my gosh, I can't believe I haven't talked about Maleficent, who is the best Disney villain maybe ever, or one of the top three Disney villains ever. She is so much 
fun. The design is wonderful. It's elegant. It's evil. She is evil. She's so interesting, and I just love everything about this film, guys. I love the background animation, even. It's wonderful. I love this film, guys. It is definitely my favorite of the Silver Age, and it is a film that I recommend everybody see and give it a chance, because I think this movie is definitely underrated, especially because many people don't like Princess Aurora because she's not very interesting, and I agree, but I don't care. I love it. Well, guys, that does it for my ranking of the Disney Silver Age. I hope you enjoyed this video, and what did you guys think of my ranking? Was I right on, or was I completely off? And I want you to leave what you would rank these films in the comments section below. Tell me your thoughts, and I will be continuing as soon as I can doing the other Disney eras. So next time we're going to be looking at the Bronze Age, or as it's also known, the Dark Age of Disney. So look forward to that coming soon. I don't know when I'll be doing that, but it will be sometime soon. But anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next review.